Okay, so now I'm going to have a quick look at the um, Queen D3 variation as well. Uh, that starts E4, E6, D4, D5, Knight C3, Bishop B4, E5, C5, A3, Bishop takes C3 check, B takes C3, Knight E7, Queen G4, Queen C7, we've seen this all before, Queen takes G7, Rook G8, Queen takes H7, C takes D4, Knight E2, Knight BC6, F4, Bishop D7. Remember, we're always ready to meet C takes D4 with Knight takes D4, and then Queen C3 check coming. Queen D3, and D takes C3. And the move that was played in this game against Carlin was the move Queen takes C3. And this is one of the main lines in this position as well. So after Queen takes C3, uh, I actually played castles, and then he continued with rook b1. Um, I've had a game which went h3 before. I don't think h3 is that good a move. It's like a reasonable move, but the main problem with h3 is that um, in the positions after h3 and then g4, um, the uh, the knight if the knight comes to h4, well I should have played knight f5. I didn't play knight f5 in the game. After g4. Knight h4, the rook isn't on g3, got an f3 square, and I think that this knight can then become actually quite annoying for white, so I think h3 is probably not as accurate as going rook g1 and then g4, followed by rook g3, because the white rook on g3 is very important to keep this knight from doing any damage with knight f3 check ideas always on the cards. So um, I had this against Colin Line in the Border League, he went h3. And I played d4, which is fine. d4 is a, a standard standard move. He went um, queen c4, and now I should have done knight f5, but um, I didn't. Instead I played f6, trying to open up the centre, take, and then knight f5. And my idea was to just try and bring the knight back to d6. He played g4, and then I went knight d6. Queen d3. And e5, and you can see how quickly black's trying to open up the centre and attack white's king. And all black's pieces are actually quite well placed, and um, white's pieces are all at home. White's main strong point is the fact he's got this pawn now on f6, which is quite a strong, strong pawn, and that can be a bit of a problem. Um, but after e5, I don't think he defends in the best way. But knight g3, which probably isn't a great move, and um, that just allowed me to play rook g8, and now. I'm looking at his king, ideas that e takes f4, and also ideas are going e4 as well. He played bishop g2, and then e takes f4 check, and um, the knight went back to e2, and black's already completely winning in this position. Um, I'm going to leave this as a, a puzzle for you to work out how does black, black win in this situation, black to play and win, see if you can work it out. But um, this is just another example of how the poison pawn French winner can just be so lethal and how black can get huge attacks very quickly. Okay, so returning to the main game after Castle's queenside. Um, instead of playing h3, he played the move rook to b1. And um, I carried on with d4. So d4 was a pretty standard kind of idea. White can take the pawn on d4. And I think that black should play d4 before preparing it, because you, you want to see where the white queen goes before you decide what setup you want to go for. If white doesn't take it, you, you've you got the two main plans of either going for this knight d5 and f6 and bishop e8 plan, S somehow working that out. Or you might want to just play knight f5, that's another idea. And you've also got this idea of going king b8, bishop c8 and b6. So there's about three main plans which you, you could play, and that might depend a little bit on where white puts the queen. So d4, if he does go for knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, um, bishop b5, this is from the game Gangudi against Gdansky in 2007. And white actually won this game, but, um, but I think black was better. If, if white does something careless, like queen takes a7 for example, then he's going to get mated very quickly after queen c3 check, and then uh, king f2 and queen takes c2 check. King f1, and then rook takes g2, for example, it's going to lead to a very quick checkmate. So that's just another example of how, how quickly things can go wrong for white in this variation. 
So after bishop to b5, queen, queen f2 was the move that was played in the Ganguly game. And then bishop takes f1, getting rid of the, the bishop. Rook takes f1. And then the game actually continued queen c6. But I think knight f5 is a stronger move. And in some positions the knight might come into d4. And I actually think black's got a better position here. So knight takes d4 after d4 is probably not not really a big problem. You just have to be willing to, to go all out on the attack in these variations. There's no holding back and playing it safe. you just got to go for a mate. And that's that's an exciting way to play chess. And I played a French to win, so that's why I like these kind of positions. So going back to the game, after d4, my opponent played queen c5. And now queen c5 made me think, OK, I'll go b6. And um, go for this plan of king king b8, bishop c8, which we've seen already, and maybe bring the Fianchetto to bishop. So I played b6, and then he played quite a tricky move here. He played the move knight g3. So his idea is if I take the queen, would be a big mistake, he's going to go bishop a6 check, and then I'm going to have to give my queen back on b7, and that's not a very nice situation. So after knight g3, I played king to b8. I'm just sort of carrying on with my plan now. I mean, if white does something like queen d6 to swap queens off, then we can take, but we, he's going to lose the e-pawn, so it's not that bad. We don't want to swap queens, but I'll just say queen d6, queen queen takes, for example, and then maybe knight c8, and we should we should be able to pick up the uh, we should be able to pick up that pawn. Um. So he didn't he didn't play that. Yeah, for example if knight e4 then then f5. And eventually we round up the d6 pawn. So he didn't go for that. He said he played bishop d3 after king b8. Just trying to develop some more pieces. So I just carried on with the same plan. I figured at some point now my bishop's going to come to b7 and he's going to have to waste a tempo with his queen, which is um, what I've been hoping for. So he played castles, and um, I just continued bishop b7. The queen went to b5, and then I just went knight d5, looking at ideas like knight c3, knight e3. I think it's like pretty clear to say that it's, the opening has been a success for black. black. All black's pieces are active, and even though white's got castled, that g2 pawn could become vulnerable in some situations. He went bishop d2, and um, I just continued with knight e3 anyway. And then bishop takes e3, d takes e3. Now, in, in this position, he, he had to find a move queen c4, which would have kept him in the game. It still would have been unclear. But instead, he played the move rook from b to e1, hoping to round up my e pawn but he's way too short in time to do that and after rook b to e1 I just carried on with knight d4 attacking the queen putting pressure on c2 so he played queen to b2 to protect the c2 pawn and now I had a very flashy move which finished off the game pretty quickly and that was the move bishop takes g2 where we play king takes g2 and then queen b7 check uh, the king can't come out because of rook h8, and then if he tries to play here, I'm going to checkmate him. For example, bishop g6, and then uh, checkmate. So after king takes g2, queen b7, check. He tried playing king back to g1, but then I just played knight f3. If he goes back onto the diagonal, I can always at least take his rook, and then I'm probably going to mate him as well as win a lot of material. So he has to play rook takes f3. Queen takes f3, and he actually resigned in this position because he couldn't see a good defence against rook takes g3 check. His best try would have been rook e2, um, which maybe he didn't see the move rook e2 because he might have tried it. But anyway, he's lost after rook takes g3, h takes g3. And then um, a very clever move in this position is the move rook to rook to h8. Um, rook g2 is the only way of stopping the mate without losing lots of material uh, but then queen h5 and 
yeah, Black's coming in and um, King F1 doesn't do anything because King F1 will allow a mate on D1 as well. So, yeah, White's just completely lost. So he resigns. So the one thing about all these Poison Pawn lines, which I hope you realise by now, is that you can get very, very quick wins and Black can just get massive attacks. And um, I've shown that in quite a lot of my games. And I really enjoy playing these positions for Black. So hopefully you do it. I mean, there is always a risk that something goes wrong and you have a bad game. But um, I think the sort of risk reward is in Black's favour. You know, maybe if two you know supercomputers were playing, then you'd rather be white. But uh, if it's two human beings, as long as you don't walk into any kind of preparation, I think you've got a very good chance, a very good practical chance of getting a, getting a good result and getting a good position and maybe getting a fast attack.